This is the issue, and I am the ghetto man. And the issue that I'm putting on the table this morning is dictatorship by stealth. Okay, in the last uh, the last three shows that I've put out, we've been mainly focused on the power to declare war. Who has that power and who doesn't? Um, last night, there was a video clip that I... Um, Listen to it. it was an interview between Wolf Blister and uh, Insane McCain on the Communist News Network, CNN. And after listening to McCain, it showed it was a clear demonstration of exactly what we've been talking about in the last three shows. And that is how to identify who is breaking the law and who is the enemy to our republic. And uh, McCain, with his, the way he reacted to uh, Rand Paul's um, concern about President Trump going to war, and when, and when you bomb somebody, that's, that's going to war, without a uh, declaration of war by the Act of, Act of Congress. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't play this clip for you. And then we're going to... Um, uh, discuss uh, what McCain said and uh, and what uh, Rand Paul said. So bear with me here for just a second, and I'll get this clip up, and uh, we'll take it from there. So let me get the clip up. Okay, let me start it from the beginning here. Totally disagree with your Republican colleague, Senator Rand Paul on this issue. Well, I wish not, to. not the first time. I'll read to you what a statement he, he released. Mm -hmm. While we all condemn the atrocities in Syria, the United States was not attacked. The president needs congressional authorization for military action as required by the Constitution, and I call on him to come to Congress for a proper debate. Our prior interventions in this region have done nothing to make us safer, and Syria will be no different. Your reaction. I, I don't really react to Senator Paul. It we're just too different, and uh, he doesn't have any real influence in the United States Senate. But he's not alone. There are other senators and members of the House who agree with him that, uh, that, the, 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 that the president needs that kind of authorization. I'll be glad to discuss that issue with the people, as I have for years. We all condemn the atrocities in Syria. The United States was not attacked. The president needs congressional authorization for military action as required by the Constitution, and I call on him to come to Congress for a proper debate. Our prior interventions in this region have done nothing to make us safer. I totally disagree with your Republican colleague, Senator Rand Paul, on this issue. Well, I wish not, to. not the first time. I'll read to you what a statement he, he released. Mm -hmm. While we have any real influence in the United States Senate. But he's not alone. There are other senators and members. Okay, let me see if I can get myself back in the picture here. And uh, let me get rid of that. Okay. Anyway, uh, it was repeated a couple of times there. But it's very clear that Rand Paul understands exactly what the power of the legislative branch of government is under Article One, Section 8. Congress is the one that only has the power to declare war. And this has to be, if the president has to go to war or wants to go to war, he has to bring this to Congress. There has to be a full debate. And then a decision is made. And we go from there. Now, that's the law. And as you can clearly see, uh, Senator Insane McCain, he disagrees with the Constitution. He doesn't think that, that uh, the president has to get any authority. They just do what they want. And they've been doing this, well, you know, since um, uh, FDR declared uh, war or asked Congress to declare war, we've been going to war without following the law. Anyway, I want to um, read a real brief, I want to read a little uh, excerpt from a Supreme Court case called Olmstead versus U.S. And I think this sums it up. Now, this was in the dissenting opinion, and people say, well, it's in the dissenting opinion, it doesn't have any. Uh, force and effect because it, it isn't the uh, the opinion of the court. Well, first of all, let me back up before I read it. When the Supreme Court rules on a issue that's before it, 
just because they rule a certain way for that particular case does not make it law. That's their opinion for that case. I know the courts have have, uh, claimed, the Supreme Court has claimed that it's the final word on the matter. I don't know where they got that. There's nothing in the Constitution that says that when the Supreme Court rules, that's the end of it. And then they turn around and they call it case law. You'll hear all the uh, lawyers tell you, this is case law. This is a benchmark case, which, yeah, it is. But it is not the law of the land. Their rulings are just their opinions. And each, each case that comes before the court has to be looked at. And the law has to be applied applied independently for each case. Okay, now, when a case is decided and the majority goes a certain way, there are judges who also put in what they call the dissenting opinion. And what they do is they tell you why they disagree with the court. And this is very important because it gives you a chance to really balance what's really being done here. And so if a court makes a unconstitutional ruling and it claims that it is now created case law, which the legislators can only create law, they, uh, the courts can only rule on it, that's an absurdity. And the fact that we go along with that just uh, boggles my mind. So anyway, this is from the dissenting opinion of Amstead versus U.S. And the court said, decency, security, and liberty alike demand that government officials shall be subject to the same rules of conduct that are commands to the citizen. In a government of laws, existence of the government will be imperiled if it fails to observe the law scrupulously. Our government is the potent, the omnipresent teacher for good or for ill. It teaches the whole people by its example. Crime is contagious. If the government becomes a lawbreaker, it breeds contempt for the law. It invites every man to become a law unto himself. It invites anarchy. To to declare that in the administration of a criminal law, the ends justifies the means to declare that government may commit crimes in order to secure the conviction of a private criminal would bring terrible retribution. And that's Amstead versus U.S. can be found in 277 U.S., 438, and that particular quote is at page 485. Okay, no, not, not going to the Congress and getting a declaration of war to go over in Syria and bomb it or whatever any president has done before then is nothing more than dictatorship by stealth. And if it's a group of people, I guess we could call it an oligarchy by stealth. But the thing is, by stealth, nevertheless, there is no provision in the Constitution that would allow any president to do what President Trump did, what President Obama did, what President Bush did, Bush Sr., Clinton, all of them. It just goes all the way back. All the presidents since FDR have been doing this with impunity. And because they've all been doing it, that makes it okay? No, it's not okay. Anyone that supports it, anyone that supports what President Trump did, including insane McCain, is an accessory to that crime. I'm the Ghetto Man. Thank you for watching. Look what you've done to your world. It used to be a wonderful place to live. There's no truth here anymore. Just lies and corruption. The beast controls everything. Terrorizing the planet. Waging war against all who would resist his evil command. Everyone's now a suspect. Guilty until the beast says otherwise. Welcome to the land of the feed and the home of the slave. You created a republic where you were king. Free to do as you wish. As long as you didn't violate anyone's life, liberty, or property. Separation of government powers. Gold and silver coins. The right to own property and freedom of religion were all yours. All of it has been destroyed.
destroyed by the beast and a vile, demonic, democratic process. There's nothing left but a shell of your constitution. <laughs> Your property will be taken away and sold to another mindless serf to be used in your stead. War has been declared on you by your servants. War against poverty, war against drugs, war against terrorism, and war against any nation who dares to defy the beast's dictatorial demand. All in violation of the supreme law of your land and the supreme law of the universe. Congress no longer answers to you, only the beast, creating laws that violate reason, logic, and common sense, even making the natural illegal, denying you access to the tree of life. Judges are irreversibly corrupt, perverting everything that's right, kissing the ass of the beast, and punishing all that desire true freedom. Your juries consist of mindless automatons that are nothing more than a rubber stamp for the prosecutor. Planet Earth is void of all truth. You have been lied to since the day you were born. The only thing that is true is that everything that you have learned from the beast is a lie. It's time for you to leave this planet. You must free yourself from the world's deception and become one with the natural law of the living, conscious universe. This is where eternal truth manifests itself. And the truth will make you free. Keeper of the earth.